This Dark Highland Green 2001 Mustang Bullet just sold for $44,000 at the Mecham auction. That's a really good price for this car. In the description it talked about how this is one of the Dark Highland Green cars and that there were four given to the McQueen family and those are stickered McQueen 1 through 4. This is not one of the McQueen cars although I think it almost sounded like they were trying to say it was. This does not have the signature on the strut tower like the McQueen bullet that has been sold before in the past has. I'll show that later in a picture here, but looking inside, the seats are really nice. The car only had 4,876 miles on it, so a very low mile car and in very good shape. There's nothing really to complain about here. If you look at the seat on the uh, driver's side, there is a little bit of a crease in the middle of the bottom part, but that's common on the Bullet Mustangs. You can see it right there just starting to show up. Um, but like I said, that's common on a lot of Bullet Mustangs. Uh, very nice car. Completely stock, 100%. And this car actually is a non-Mach 460 audio car. I noticed that quickly. And that's another reason why I know it's not one of the McQueen cars, because the McQueen cars were mock audio cars. So here is the McQueen 4 sticker of the actual McQueen car, which this car is not. And like I said, that car would have been a mock audio car. So here's more close-ups of the interior. You can see that the car does not have the mock tweeters. And so that makes this car one of 168 of the Dark Highland Green bullets that did not come with the mock audio system. And on the black Mustang bullets, there were 110 that did not come with the mock audio system. And the true blue bullet Mustangs, like the one I own, is a non-mock audio car. That's one of 54 only that did not come with the mock audio system. So Dark Highland Green Bullets that did have the mock audio system was 2,873. Again, this one is 168 that did not have the mock audio. So that's pretty rare for the Dark Highland Green cars. It's actually really rare to see a Dark Highland Green Bullet that doesn't have the mock audio system. I can't think of many that I've ever actually seen that did not have the mock system in them that were green. And so if we look closely at the radio, you can see it is the single disc non-mock head unit on there. So it is a different looking one. That's the one I have in my bullet because it's a non-mock audio car. The other one would have a in-dash six disc changer there. It looks similar, but it would be a six disc one. This is a picture out of another bullet that has the six disc in it, and you can see it says that on the CD slot where you would load the discs. And there are some other parts of this radio that are different. You can tell the difference if you look close. And while we're at it, we might as well mention that the black bullets with the mock audio system were 1,708, and the true blue with the mock audio system were 669. So besides being an export or Canadian model, that was the only option for the Bullet Mustang, was the audio system. So that's pretty interesting. Interior is really nice on this car. There's the aluminum shift ball. There's the seats, again, a little bit better picture. Really nice looking car inside and out. The engine bay looks really nice, all original and stock. The only thing I noticed was the intake manifold and alternator area there do have a little bit of pitting from the aluminum in humid climates, so I imagine this car came from somewhere with a lot of humidity. And that shows more on top of the struts with the hardware being pretty rusty looking on top of there. So it's hard to read the bullet number on the strut tower on that hologram sticker. Difficult to read them the picture. I'm actually surprised that they did not include what number this car was in the information before the auction. And looking at the engine bay, I can tell that it is a later built bullet because it has a threaded hole on the intake manifold. In this picture, you can kind of see underneath the black box, there are two threaded holes there. So on this bullet intake manifold that is taken off of the car, you can see in the bottom there are those two threaded holes, and one of them has a threaded plug in it already. And that is most likely because the person has already gone through plugging that 
It's been an issue with the bullets before where it leaks and if you look at the uh, side of the engine, the arrow on the right is the part we're looking at and the arrow on the left shows where that vacuum line goes into the side of the valve cover. There's like a three-way inlet there for all the vacuum hoses. And so if we look at this picture, I know this is getting a little complicated, but the uh, green arrow is pointing to two heater hoses that have a T that have broken. And this is a common problem with these later bullets. There's a heater hose T there, and the purple arrow is the rest of the T. And you can see how it loops around and it plugs in, and then the red arrow is where that purple arrow goes and the red arrow is looping back down to the side of the valve cover. So it is all plumbed in together, so when you eliminate that T, that three-way T, you have to plug the other side of the intake manifold. And in that earlier picture, where someone has already done that, that's the reason why, because they had a problem with this. You see these plastic T's are known for cracking, and then they spray coolant everywhere because the heater core is connected to it and it leaves you stranded because the car can overheat and you'll see usually the coolant uh, smoking on because it's running down the side of the engine and it's hot and it'll steam out the hood and so that's a common problem with these bullets and uh, I'd also just like to mention that the green arrow is pointing to the hole that they plugged and I've used a uh, Allen plug just like that one out of the back of a cylinder head to plug mine but the hole next to it, right below, is where I believe the coolant temperature sensor goes as well, just to get that clear. And the reason I bring this up is because the bullet Mustangs had this change somewhere down the line, and the later bullets had these added vacuum lines. If you look at the intake manifold on an earlier bullet, it has the place there for it, but it's just flat. It's not threaded, it's not tapped, it's just a flat circular piece of the intake manifold. So I can tell that this car is a higher number bullet just by looking at that. There's no other way that I know of that you can tell how old or new a bullet would be in the production number without looking at that visual difference. Looking at the car, it looks really nice. Maybe there's a little bit of swirl or scratches on the car, but it's definitely a nice low mile car the paint looks beautiful. This is an example of getting a nice bullet Mustang with low miles, almost new. Yes, the front bumper has had a license plate on it, so there are drill holes in the front bumper. Some collectors frown upon that. A lot of people who love these cars frown upon that. It's just something that has happened to the car in its lifetime. A lot of times the dealership will get the uh, drill out and they will put those holes in the front bumper and put their dealer license plate, paper plate on there before anyone has a chance to even buy the car. So unless you ordered the car and had it non-dealer prepped and you picked it up right off the truck, there's a good chance that the car will have those holes in the front license plate. It's just part of the way these cars were. There's nothing you could really do about it, so it's really nothing to complain about if it's there. It's just a plus if it doesn't have it there. So really nice car. It still has the Goodyear tires on it. I think this is an example of being able to buy a bullet as close to brand new as you're going to get. 4,000 miles is super low. I've driven one that had 5,000 miles on it. It was really fun. It was really nice and it's just an experience that I was happy that I had. So very beautiful car. Now bringing in $44,000 is really good for this car, especially since a Terminator with 8,000 miles just sold for 40000 and I think that was just a matter of not having the right people bidding on it. And this bullet maybe had a couple people who were fighting over it, which brought the price up. But this is a very high price. Originally, one of the four McQueen bullets had sold for $50,000, more of towards when it was new for charity, and that was the highest price for a bullet, a 2001 bullet back then. And I've seen one of the McQueen bullets for sale over the years at different dealerships, very high-end dealerships, asking ninety dollars to $100,000 for them. So if this car sold for fifty, dollars maybe the McQueen Bullets will continue to go up there because there were only four of those cars. But anyway, really beautiful car. 
Really cool to see a Dark Highland Green Bullet and see it bringing in good money. I really love these cars and I'm really glad to see them getting appreciated. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and stay tuned for more Mustang content.